Hello, welcome to another Talk of the Town. I'm Tom Wright. And I'm Mo McNary. We're so glad that you are taking time out of your busy day to hang out with us. Thank you. Yes, yes. This will be your treat, our pleasure. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It is fun. Uh, so tell me about you. How have you been? Been doing great. Doing yes. great. Yes. How's Cannon Falls? Cannon Falls is great. Have you made contact with the other Talk of the Town show? I have not yet. Okay. Have that you been watching? List. Do you have cable down there? I don't have cable, no. Okay. No, it's way, yeah, they... The price down there is way up high. So. Really? Yeah, not I like do the, here? No. no. Here. Nine bucks here. Nine bucks. So tell your went, friends. Sign up for Comcast. It went up Comcast. to 12 I think. It's not terrible, no, it's, though. It's not terrible. No. Uh -uh. We're worth nine bucks a month alone. Twelve dollars, I think. Nine dollars. <laughs> nine dollars. Nine fifty, I think, <laughs> to be exact. <laughs> so anyway. Well, so I could afford to get the cable because I got another job now, Mo. What? Yeah. Are you two-timing me? I am two-timing, yeah. What's going on? I got a second career now. Is this true? Is well, this breaking news? This is breaking news because, uh, yeah, as some of you know, I am divorced and I have a, you know, attorneys aren't cheap, by the way. So, yes. racked up a little debt there and I'm thinking, you know what, I really want to pay this off. So, I went looking for, you know, a little part-time job good, to good. get some extra cash. Well, I'm proud and of you. And now I am proud yes. and happy to be a pizza delivery guy. I love it. Yeah. What, kind of pizza, what kind of pizzas? Dudley's Pizza, to be exact, is the place. Now, how about Good. you? I heard you did had a big singing gig uh, at the for the St. Paul Saints. Oh, I got to tell you, that was very fun. Um, I've had the great pleasure of singing at the St. Paul Saints games for probably 10 years. And this year, they moved to their new space, uh, CHS Field, oh. which is right at the foot of the Lafayette Bridge in St. Paul. Gorgeous stadium. Um, it was really, it was just an awesome night. It was a beautiful night. I... Uh, yeah, it was just really, really fun. Wow, were you nervous? You know, I have to tell you, I, yes, I was. And I think that, um, I think that's a sign of adrenaline. I get nervous about um, a lot of things. I think that people would think, well, you're not nervous. But I think you that's just. You didn't have any just... accidents, did you? you know, my accidents. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <Just> between... <laughs> <laughs> I had no accidents. No, <laughs> okay. I'm not that old no, yet. <laughs> Good gravy. I'm not implying that. No. No, people get nervous. They, you mean, did you know, I spill soda on myself? Happen. Yeah, there we go. Did I get ketchup? No, but you know what? It was very, very fun. I mean, but once I was done, I was like, phew, because, you know, the national anthem, uh, you can psych yourself out and you could forget the words at any given moment if you get lost. And then the stadium was so much bigger than I anticipated because uh, they really jumped to a bigger You could hear the echo. So you're singing, oh, say, can you, you know, by the stars and, and it's coming back at you. Mm. So it was, but oh my gosh, it was so fun. Yeah, so here's a crazy. picture. So what else is going on? Even though you do not live in Hastings, you have the pulse on what goes on here. Oh, I have the pulse. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> here we go. Here are the taut headlines, Mo. The news without the annoying facts. First, oh. you can learn to be a cop in just eight weeks. Really? Yes, the Hastings Police Department has brought back the Citizen Academy. The eight-week course will give residents a unique opportunity to get familiar with what our local police officers are up to. So they'll be getting classes and hands-on instruction with all right. the fun cop stuff. Wow. Yeah, there's stuff like uh, traffic stops, the canine unit, mm -hmm. SWAT, narcotics, and more. It all starts October 1st. Uh, if uh, anybody's interested, you can sign up at the Citizen for the Citizen Academy at the city's website and do it there soon because there's only 20 spots. So will you will you be able to then arrest people after this? It's a good know? question. I know you can't shoot a gun. I did ask that. Oh, okay. So can't shoot a gun. I don't think you get, on the plus side, you don't get tased or pepper sprayed either, I understand, which the real cops, they do. Do you have the ability to tase or pepper spray people? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I guess if you're into that kind of thing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, those yes. participating can leave their canines and narcotics at home. Oh. School supplies will be provided. I understand. All right, next up, we almost had a world record setting here in Hastings. A huge ALS ice benefit, ice bucket challenge, rather, recently took place for Lucy Hoffman. Yes. Uh, a Hastings native who uh, was diagnosed with ALS earlier this year. And uh, Mo, I don't know if you heard, were you able to attend that? I did not ahead? participate, no, but boy, I'm sure for it. Yes, yeah, definitely. Well, they had 920 buckets of ice mm. uh, water set at Veterans Park to break the world record, which is at 782 buckets dumped at once. Um, they came up a bit short. It was about 600 to 700 people there. Mm -hmm. But still, that's a good crowd. It's a great right? crowd. Um, still a huge crowd. And they raised $14,000 mm. for the ALS Association. And a uh, very happy crowd. Wonderful. So, 
and a very hydrated crowd because they uh, it was a hot day and there was plenty of ice water to go around. There you go. Sure. It's all good. Finally, the east rink of our Civic Arena has a new name. Yes, I heard about this. Yes. It's great news. Big deal. Hockey players and fans will soon be entering the McGree East Rink. The City Council just approved the change and uh, the suggested new name came from the Hastings Hockey Association. Mm -hmm. They wanted to honor the longtime Civic Arena manager, Jim Sliv McGree. Do you know how he got that sliv? I don't. Do you know? No, I don't. I, was I think he had a sliver once and he couldn't get it out. And so he asked the hockey team to get their tweezers out. <laughs> I really hope it's not that. I really hope it's not that sliv. Uh, McGree had retired from his duties at the arena in 2013 after 30 years of service and, and leaving bags yeah. of slivered almonds all over. Uh, uh, he was a very popular and well-respected yes, man. Yes, great man. Yes, uh, with the local hockey community. And, uh, but you know, another familiar hockey name was proposed. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the East Tuck Rink by the Super oh. Pack People for Nick Tuckner also right. Uh, came up. That's a very active and powerful group. It is. Oh yes. my gosh. You don't mess with the people for Nick Tucker. You do not. No. That you know who doesn't even mess with them? Dan Massman. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy right here. <laughs> um, but now they're not giving up though. They did lose to McGree, but they're not giving up. Mm -hmm. They now have their sights set on getting a sign on the men's restroom door. Oh, so. you know. Can't win them all. Yeah. Can't win them all. You gotta pick your battles. That's it. Yeah. That's great. Start somewhere. You gotta get, you gotta start somewhere. Uh huh. All right, and those are the headlines. You're Excellent. all officially informed. And you know, I'm very excited because we have uh, Jennifer Veith coming and also a friend. What do you think of that? Uh, yeah, I heard, it's, I heard it's a feathered friend. Yes, that'll be very that'll fun. That'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, had some fun at uh, Relay for Life. Well, we uh, respectful fun. Respectful fun, of yes. course. Yes, we're always respectful on top. Come on. Excellent, Come on. so we will be back. 41 holes of booyah on the wall. 41 holes of booyah. You take one down, you pass it around. 40 holes of booyah on the wall. Cut, cut, cut. You know, something, something's missing here. Accents. That's what we need. We needed accents on. I'm sorry. I don't think this is working. It's working. This is hilarious. We're all laughing back here. It's working. It's not working. It's been two hours of this, Tom. Singing and passing bowls. With different accents. Which I don't get, the accents. I don't get the accents. Accents are funny. Accents sell booyah tickets. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Polly Shore. Polly Shore? <laughs> yeah, she's right. We gotta wrap this thing up. All right. One last take, one last take, but in German. In German. German accent. All right, from the top, 75, 75 bowls. We would like to invite you to our 75th annual Booyah at the Knights of Columbus Hall on Vermilion Street in Hastings, Minnesota. It will be Sunday, September 13th at 11 a.m. 2015. Join us for a wonderful time with family and friends to support your local fire department. Hail Booyah! Yes, but let's try Polly Shore. Dude. Hello there, welcome back to Talk of the Town. That's right, and now we're gonna go to our, our little out and about segment at a very, very great event called Relay for Life, and wonderful event. You'll see so much, so much good stuff there. A lot of good stuff. Yeah. All right, Katie, uh, here to talk about Relay for Life, the big annual event here at the Hastings High School. Uh, what is it? What is Relay for Life? Relay for Light is a community um, event that we have here in Hastings that honors our cancer survivors. Um, so we have teams that kind of gather together, they raise money for the American Cancer Society, and they come out and they just have an event where we walk around the track um, and have games and activities. How many people do you have involved, usually at walk? Uh, we have a couple hundred people. Um, we have nine teams this year. We'll probably have around 20 or 30 survivors that will come out and the caregivers. Um, for this year and are they a pretty tame crowd or do you got to kind of do you guys have to hire bouncers for I this kind of thing we have to have some serious security here as you can see people are getting pretty rowdy they do get a little crazy like that woman right there i think someone should tackle her hi we are at this fabulous event relay for life of course doesn't happen without a lot of things going on behind the scenes and we have with us the co-chairs linda first let's tell uh, how long have you been involved this is my 20th year and like pretty much everyone here you got involved because my dad died of cancer. But you know, shockingly, this is a very uplifting and it's a very hope-filled and positive evening, isn't it? It is. It is. I mean, everybody's here celebrating. 
um, remembering and fighting back. Joanne, cancer doesn't just touch the person that's affected, does it? It really mushrooms out to family, friends, co-workers? Yes, it does. I've been hit with, my brother passed away of cancer five years ago and my boss is a survivor of cancer. But besides this great event, this show is called Talk of the Town, so I've got to ask you, what's the talk of the town? Cancer, the American Cancer Society, really for life. Jay Coconut, we're with a familiar face, talk of the town, remember this guy? Yes, this guy in studio, Jay Coconover, one of the co-founders of Gobblegate, and he is now here at the Relay for Life. So Jay, uh, how long have you been involved with this? You know, I was uh, trying to think of that. Every time I come here, I, I think to myself, gosh, what year does this make it? I want to say 21. What is the talk of the town? The talk of the town tonight is uh, Relay for Life, of course. Uh, great music, raising funds for a great organization uh, for people in need and uh, fight this disease. You kids are part of, you're doing this for Girl Scouts, isn't that correct? Yes. So tell us how cancer has affected you. Um, well, my great-grandmother, she died of cancer, and um, I know Cassie over here, she, her grandma survived cancer. Your grandma's here? Yeah, right there. That's great. Get over here. We want to talk to a survivor. Congratulations Thank on being you. such a great survivor. This is a very moving, moving event, isn't it? Yes, it is. I know that a lot of people think that a lot of money's been put on cancer, but they're still dying. Yes, and look at all of these bags around here. That is what's so There's moving. The white ones then yellow. Yeah. And until that changes, <laughs> we still gotta fight. Oh, oh, Sheila, this woman knows. Really? No, no, Sheila, come no. here. <laughs> yes, Mo, hi. Hi, Sheila. What is the talk of the town, Sheila? I have no idea. What are you talking about? Tonight's the relay. 20 years I did all the food, but this year I decided to bow wow and I kind of missed it so I had to come and walk. Well you have a lot of cancer survivors and people that have succumbed in your family. Yes my sister is a 15 year ovarian cancer survivor and she's doing great. And uh, what brings you here? Who are you here for? <laughs> Myself and my and a whole lot of other family members that have passed and that are survivors as well. So what's your story if I may ask? I had two doses of lymphoma. How are you doing now? How are you feeling? Free. I'm Answer feeling good, free. yeah. So, oh, congratulations. Well, you're looking pretty good. And two bouts you. of lymphoma, that's, that's, that's impressive. Thanks. So this is just a great event. Again, it's the 21st annual Relay for Life. And I got to tell you, I am choking back tears. This is really a beautiful event. It yep, is. it's a great event. Really glad to be here. So there you go. Another, yep. Again, a great event. A great event, very emotional event, and i um, glad that we had the opportunity to explore that. That's right. And I'm especially glad that we have the opportunity to introduce our next guest. We have with us today Jennifer Veith, who is from the Carpenter St. Croix Valley Nature Center. Welcome to you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, I'm so glad that you're here and you brought a friend. Yes, <laughs> please introduce us. Who do we have here? My handsome friend. This is the peregrine falcon that lives at the Carpenter Nature Center. And he lives there. He's not going to fly away because... He was actually injured in the wild. You can see the wing on the camera side is beautiful. The wing on my side is permanently damaged. Somebody mm -hmm. found him, rescued him, and then got him treated locally instead of getting him to the Raptor Center. We're so fortunate in this area to have the Raptor Center in the Twin Cities. They're one of the global experts in Raptor medicine. So unfortunately, he can never fly again. This wing mm -hmm. is permanently disabled, but he's got a fantastic second career inspiring youth to get engaged with nature, learn about birds like this. This guy's the fastest creature in the world. And then also learn wow. what to do if you find an injured bird of prey. How fast are we talking here? How fast you drive. Oh. Speed limit, of course. Yes. Faster. Faster than that. Really? Faster than you drive. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now they, that is like supersonic. You're funny. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've clocked these guys Smells like diving. they don't have proof. <laughs> they've clocked them diving over 248 miles an hour. Oh my what? gosh. Yeah. And um, he, he seems very relaxed right now. How do you get him to be so relaxed? Um, it's a lot of training. Uh, we wouldn't bring him unless he was going to be relaxed. We wouldn't have him in front of a classroom of kindergartners unless okay. he was relaxed. So it's all positive reinforcement. 
You can't pat him like a parrot. He's not social, he doesn't like that, so we give him uh, food reinforcements. And what is that food, do I dare um, ask? Things like quail. He's very, you know. Quail? Very fancy diet. Oh, <laughs> wow. So these guys are almost strictly 100% bird eaters in the wild. They will sometimes take other things like bats and, and small mammals, but their speed is so that they can outmaneuver other birds in that dive. They're known as the duck hawk. That's kind of a nickname because they'll kill ducks. Falconers have used them really? to kill ducks for, you know, centuries. Um, but they can not only knock a great blue heron out of the sky, they can also catch, kill, and eat their prey in their air without landing. So he could snatch something small, like a songbird, with those long skinny toes out of the air. He's got an extra notch on the side of his beak for breaking its neck, and he could hold it in his feet while he's flying and eat it. Wow. Fast food, right? So what, do you like, where do you get the, the food? I mean, do you, is it quail.com? Where do you get the, you know, birds we, for them to eat? We actually have a uh, supply. Jennifer has a slingshot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that, something about the law and question. the wildlife laws, I'd be in trouble You're a pretty good shot. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. Well, we have an eagle, an owl, a falcon, and a hawk there. So we get our birds from, uh, and our rats and mice from places like Rodent Pro or Gourmet Rodent. Okay. So the Carpenter St. Croix Valley Nature Center is actually, it's two locations, isn't it? It is, correct. We have the original location in Hastings, just over the bridge in Denmark Township. Um, and then there's a second location that's been around for over 25 years. It's just south of Hudson, um, just off East Cove Road. It's gorgeous, but there isn't a permanent facility there mm -hmm. yet or anything, just trails. And so the Carpenter Nature Center, St. Croix Valley Nature Center, is open to everybody. Mm -hmm. it and I, I think it's such a little hidden treasure that people don't really know about. And how many people does it take to pull off this hidden treasure? How many, <laughs> how many are on your staff and how many volunteers do you have and all um, that? We only have seven full-time staff. We added a temporary outreach position that we're hoping we can make permanent. Um, so it's sort of like seven and a half, almost eight. And then we have these amazing volunteers that show up and do everything from putting stamps on envelopes to weeding the garden to helping with the apple orchard. Um, we have about 166 people every year that donate over 12,000 hours. Wow. So oh it just gosh. gives you faith in people, right. the donors that support the uh, programs going out into schools. It's, you know, you hear all the bad news all the time, and then you, you run into people like that, and you walk the trails for free. It's just amazingly inspiring and encouraging. It is, and it was something that is a legacy of an actual family, the Carpenters. Right. Can you explain that? Sure. Yeah, Tom and Edna Carpenter uh, lived out there in the 40s. They moved out in the 40s, and they didn't have any children. so. When they got up there in years, they decided to make a private foundation so that the land could be saved forever for people to enjoy. So, mm. like our dear departed friend Lou uh, Stoffel used to say, it's all like, we're all Carpenter's children today because mm. we get to enjoy their legacy. That is really awesome. It is. It is. Well, I'll tell you what, Jennifer, are you ready for some Tot 5? <laughs> sure. I already <laughs> meant take a hike, Mike, so this can't yeah. be worse, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> 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 well, here we go. We're going to keep the lights uh, for our friend here, our feathered friend here. We're going to keep the sure. lights normal. We don't want. Uh, no. I don't want you diving at me at 240 miles per hour. He's doing so well. Yeah, he is. He's doing yeah, really well. He's, he's a rock star. <laughs> he is. All Look right, first him. one here. If you could trade places with any animal on this planet, what animal would it be? Wow. Hmm. I think I'd be a raven up in Alaska. Oh. Because they're really smart. And they have their little family units, and I mean, Alaska's gorgeous, so oh. along the coast there. That's a nice great bird. answer. Yeah. Wow. If you could fly like a bird and fly far, <laughs> far away, where would you go? And what would you do? Well, I think I'd uh, hop on the flight path with maybe those uh, wood thrush and go down to Costa Rica. Oh. And they spend their winters in uh, shade grown coffee plantations. So oh. that would be a pretty shade cool. Shade grown coffee. Do they drink coffee? Do you no, think? unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> no. I wouldn't like to. <laughs> they, they don't have good uh, dietary taste, <laughs> but uh, you can hang out in a coffee well, that's plantation. A great, huh? That's uh, a great question and uh, a great answer. Yes. Um, if you had to accidentally step in any animal's feces, which what animals is, would it be? Wow. I'm yeah. sorry. No, this is This perfect. is what I, I put up. I have a nine-year-old son. This is totally <laughs> normal type of questions. <laughs> we try and target the nine-year-olds out there, too. <laughs> well, um, let's go for caterpillar. It's just tiny. Oh, hey, there you go. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. I guess I didn't even, I mean, of, of course I knew they went, but... I, I don't. Well, of course, I caterpillars would, go. I, I think I guess. <laughs> you didn't, did you? Of course. I, I saw did one it. Go once, I think. 
All right. Well, this is uh, this is a question you're going to find it hard to believe that somebody's <laughs> making me ask. But if you had to get a tattoo of any animal, what would it be? Actually, when I was a teenager, I put lots of thought into this. Never ended up getting one. Oh, you did? I did. Yeah. And it was between a polar bear or a Canada goose in that Native American art style, way up um, by okay. Benjamin Chichi. But when you're like 90 and everything's saggy and right. often no, no tattoos, but <laughs> <laughs> probably an artistic impression of a Canada goose over the Northern territories of Canada. Ooh. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right, final question and you'll be off the hook. And lots of animal questions here. If you were stranded on a desert island with just one animal, which mm. animal would you want to be stuck with? Hmm. Well, let's say him. We could send him out. He could bring back really birds, kill birds, and there we go. I'd actually have food to eat. Ah, yeah. Because yeah, I was thinking, if you're going to take it that route, to uh, think about food supply, you know, the animal you want to. Yeah. I don't want to share a, a an island with cow. You know. You yeah. know that would no. That Is would be cow? no. What about nugget? Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> My precious nugget. See, I was thinking, even if we didn't get off, we'd have each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you and mommy go night night <laughs> forever together. <laughs> And There's so a scene for you. You and Nugget, who would you choose? Oh my gosh. Um, I think I would go the cow route because you can milk the cow for a while. I like cereal. Oh no, I don't have cereal there. But how big is the island though? And how I much love cereal, yeah. right? Desert island, there's you're not much for the cow to eat. No, you're right. Oh. So I have to do the milking quick. <laughs> so it doesn't spoil. But then what would yes. you do with it all? <laughs> what did the refrigerator? I'd oh, figure it out. Okay. I'd figure it out on the fly mole. That's what I do. You'd be terrible. You're yeah. no MacGyver. <laughs> I'm total MacGyver. Give me a piece of bubble gum and a, and a coat hanger. No, I'll figure it I'd out. I'd rather be stranded with her. <laughs> Anyway, well, well, thank you for coming in. And welcome. again, um, you have a fabulous website, I know. Would you be so kind as to give it? Sure. It's www.carpenternaturecenter.org. And your hours of operation? Are 8 to 4.30 daily, and you can come in, hike the trails for free, and we've always got some friendly person you can chat with and learn more about the environment. Wow. Oh. Well, thank you so You're much. It's really nice to meet your friend. Thank you. Yes. yes. And thank you for staying, <laughs> being so polite, staying there. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Very, very. I wish my staff could, you know, do that <laughs> very once impressive. in a while. And we will be back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ben Utech. I played high school, college, and pro football, helping my team win the 2006 championship. That was an amazing day, but it can't compare to the joy I feel every day with my loving wife and three beautiful daughters. My football career ended after I suffered my fifth concussion. Did you know that over a million athletes suffer a concussion each year? That includes boys and girls, every age, every type and level of sport. It isn't always clear that a player has had a concussion, so parents, athletes and coaches need to learn about concussion signs and symptoms. The American Academy of Neurology recommends athletes thought to have a concussion be immediately removed from play and not return until assessed by a healthcare professional trained in concussion. This isn't just about sports. It's about your brain. When in doubt, sit it out. Learn more at aan.com slash concussion. A message from the American Academy of Neurology. Welcome back to our show, Talk of the Town, and it's time for... What a crack! <laughs> we're very excited because today we are going to... What are we uh, going to do? Well, I tell you what, we're back in the fall season, and if you're like me, everybody and their brother is ringing your doorbell saying, uh, might you like some zucchini? Might you like some tomatoes from my garden? The answer is, oh, thank you so much, but you know what? I have plenty of zucchini, and you can only make so much zucchini bread. So we are actually just going to throw all these wonderful vegetables. You've heard of grilled vegetables. We're going to crock some vegetables. I'm still stuck on random strangers delivering vegetables to your door. <laughs> Doesn't that happen in your no, neighborhood? No, that never happens. In Cannon Falls? <laughs> Get on the stick, Cannon Falls. That's yeah, very exciting. I guess so. <laughs> you know, maybe when you deliver pizzas, you, yeah. could, you could have somebody... I could, uh, I could deliver veggies too? Is yes, that what you're saying? Actually, some kids were selling them. They had a wagon going up and down our street. And mm. I'm like, I don't Maybe know. that's where the money's at. I have my own. Anyway, we are, um, we're not going to, we're going to try to cut down on, on the use of oil. So we're going to use our bag again. All right, safe and crock again, potting. Yes. So what we're going to do now, you're actually going to help me this session. You're going to do a lot of cutting. I've been helping you every session. Right, but this. I practically do the whole thing. I love though. how you push your, your I practically uh, your do the whole sleeves. thing. You do. Okay, you've earned a hat. 
Not just any hat. Oh, but look this at that. Is a chef's curious hat. George. I don't curious know. Curious George, where did I get that? <laughs> And, you know, so you're saying, George, I'm, you're saying I'm a curious monkey. I kind of like Curious George because he means well, but he always gets in trouble. Not unlike you. That's very cute. Never in trouble. When the moon hits your eye, right, you look like a, a pizza guy or something. Single yes. and available. <laughs> anyway, so here's what we're going to do. You are going to start uh, cutting up peppers. All right, Aren't cool. Aren't they I can awesome? Cut and you know, let's make this lovely and, and a little bit Cutting very peppers colorful. is my specialty. Okay, now cut them in just I have a big degree chunks. in cutting peppers. I took the liberty of cutting up some peppers also. So just big, big giant chunks. Oh, big giant yeah, chunks. Okay. Giant chunks. Don't make, make your life easy. I have a degree in giant chunks too. There you go, giant chunks. So we're going to put some peppers in there. And you know, another thing, this time of year, sweet potatoes. Or Ooh, as a so friend of mine says, potatoes. I love sweet potatoes, and so I'm going to actually put in a lot of stuff. You know, when you pulled those out, I thought that was cantaloupe, and I was like, why? what are peppers <laughs> going to do with <laughs> cantaloupe? That's an interesting mix. Oh, so we're going to chunk those up, put those in, and then zucchini, the infamous zucchini. This is not a cucumber. This is a zucchini. That apparently strange people just deliver to Mo. Yes, and you know what, man? A zucchini bread is great, but it's a little bit more time-consuming than just cutting up this baby. So cut this maybe into chunks like that. Would you be so kind? Good. Now here's what we're going to toss it with. We're actually just we going to take some zesty Italian dressing.